why did you come listening a lecture of a physicist on the nature of time? I mean, if it was on the nature of uh, some chemical interacting with you, nobody would come here. But time interests us. Time touches us. Time is not neutral for us. In fact, it's dramatically not neutral for us. First of all, because we live in time, we can't even think about ourselves outside time. So time is structured to the way we are made. We are time things. Since the brain is designed by evolution to use memory to anticipate for a purpose, because it's designed to try to get somewhere, that's, that's how uh, Darwinian evolution designed our, our, our behavior, then all this is strongly emotionally charged. The passage of time is not for us a rational thing to contemplate. It's something we live into. We are the pass this passage of time. We are this constant computing of time. We are a time machine, not the universe. We have to look at the specific of our brain functioning more than the temporal structure of the universe itself. Of course, there's a relation. I'm not saying that the temporal structure of the universe itself is irrelevant. But I'm saying that by looking only at the temporal structure of the universe, you always get the feeling that there's something missing with respect to the time of our experience. Philosophers who have discussed time from the most extremely different perspective have both made this observation of how much time is emotionally uh, charged. Uh, for us. You find this observation in Heidegger and uh, you find this uh, observation in Reichenbach, which are philosophers of the most extreme philosophical position of the possible. Our brain is a machine designed to tell the story about the past and do something in the future. We are full of motivation, right? We have hunger, we have thirst, we have ambition, we have curiosity, we have love, we have hate. We are, that's what we are before being rational beings. And this drive, this drive of the brain to control our homeostasis and, uh, and struggle to, to, to make us survive and do better because evolution wants us to, 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 to be like that, it's all oriented in time. So time is emotionally charged for us. Time is what brings us things we want, is the opening of the future, okay? And time is what is emotionally charged for us because it makes us lose things constantly all the time. So time is a source of our suffering. We suffer because we lose things, or because we have lost things, or because we, shall, we think we will lose things. So it's, we're going to die. So this is the quintessential source of anxiety for, uh, for humans. So times is strongly colored emotionally. And why I'm saying this? Because I think if we think that this emotional side of time is a sort of fog that uh, does not allow us to see the real nature of time, we are confusing ourselves. Because this emotional aspect of time is precisely what is deeply time for us. Time for us is this emotional connection to the event of the world that go away, that pass, that flow, that we lose. And this is the root of our strong sense of passing time and feeling, feeling time. It's time for us. The more we go general in the picture of the universe, the more time loses species, and there is a very weak form of temporality. And in, in, in closest to us, I think the strong emotional connection with time, the emotion of time, is what time is for us. For us, time is, yes, the time of Einstein, yes, the time of Newton, yes, the time of thermodynamics, but it's also the time of our brain, and it's also the time of our emotions. So it's these layers, this, all these layers that makes the complex structure of what we call time. And unless we look at all of them, we just don't understand what we're talking about when we talk about time. So time, at the end, the, the, the emotion of time is not the fog that prevents us to understand what time is. It's actually, to a large extent, what time is for us.